While reusability seems challenging for most space companies, it's become a habit for SpaceX as we frequently see them reusing the first stage of their rockets. However, another equally important aspect often gets overlooked, the fairing. So, let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech, how has SpaceX improved its ability to reuse fairings on its rockets? This has truly shocked both Boeing and even NASA. Thanks to a recent cluster of major milestones, SpaceX's family of Falcon 9 and heavy rockets is rapidly the way along the path to ambitious goals for booster and fairing reusability. With the latest launch on May 8th, the Falcon rocket family has surpassed the total number of space shuttle missions from NASA's historic Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. The combination of Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches marks 83 missions to orbit from SpaceX's KSC pad, compared to the total of 82 shuttle launches over the program's 30-year history. Regarding reusability, the recent Falcon 9 launch achieved the 305th landing of a first stage in SpaceX's inception. The company has refurbished a total of 42 recovered boosters, which have subsequently flown at least twice, with one booster setting a record of 20 missions and landings. All of these milestones are towering beacons that competitors in the industry must always gaze up at, even taking them as targets to strive for on their career paths. However, it's essential to understand that SpaceX never rests on its laurels. They continuously research and innovate to push their work forward as much as possible. That is as simple as reusing a Falcon rocket. They were never satisfied with just reusing the first stage of the rocket, but wanted to reuse the entire rocket. Back in the early 2010s, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk's original dream was to make Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy 100% reusable, meaning that the company would need to find ways to reliably recover booster first stages, payload fairings, and the rocket's upper second stages. The concept of Falcon 9 second stage reuse survived into 2018 before Musk ultimately conceded defeat, accepting that Falcon 9 and Heavy simply didn't offer the performance necessary to make full reusability a worthwhile investment. The concept, however, still lives on in SpaceX's next-generation Starship launch vehicle. This does mean Falcon rockets will never be fully reusable, but it's still up to SpaceX to decide how far they'll push the envelope with rockets existing reusable hardware. Finally, SpaceX has considered leveraging the most valuable part of the Falcon's rocket second stage, the fairing. When SpaceX began exploring ways to reuse the fairing of the Falcon rocket line, it marked a significant leap forward in their reusability efforts to date. This was clearly demonstrated through statements made by Elon Musk during a company-wide presentation in January. He confidently stated, So at an immense amount of effort, we now quite regularly recover the fairing, and we've reflown fairing 300 times. 300 times. That sounds like the stuff of dreams, doesn't it? But that's precisely the truth that SpaceX has achieved, and it's undoubtedly a tremendous source of pride. Because this has brought both significant impacts not only to the entire company, but also the entire space industry. Firstly, it shines as a bright star in the launch market. Cost savings, a truly galactic game changer. Elon Musk said, around $6 million in savings per recovery, reflown fairing more than 300 times, altitude control thruster, steerable parachute. In fact, the fairing recovery is a significant issue as it helps reduce rocket costs by 80%. After each landing, it's brought back to SpaceX and refurbished at minimal levels. Ideally, this means no critical components are replaced, only system checks like wiring, flight computers, fuel leak checks, engine bell x-rays, turbo pump vibration analyzer checks, etc. Fairings may seem mundane, but they're worth $6 million bucks a set, equivalent to 10% of the launch costs, so they are very much worth recovering. Now, $6 million might seem like a drop in the vast exploration ocean when considering the total launch costs of Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, or other high-priced rockets. And this figure becomes even more enormous when we do a simple calculation with over 300 reuses. The result is an exorbitant figure of $1.8 billion, one that not only underscores the colossal impact of fairing recovery on SpaceX's financial landscape, but also highlights the transformative power of cost efficiency in the space industry. In addition to cost savings, recovering and reuse fairings also increase SpaceX's flight rate. Of course, this also includes reusing the first stage boosters of the Falcon rockets. SpaceX's reverse-engineered financial models show that to achieve robust positive cash flow, they need more than the traditional 10 to 12 launches per year that large rockets have demonstrated. With reusability, 20 to 25 flights per Falcon, with up to 90% of the cost being reusable, would put SpaceX in a much stronger cash flow position. So I believe this is a very big motivator. 
Reusability is a fantastic brand image tool, but more importantly, it allows SpaceX to double its flight rate and earn more money while getting ready for the journey to Mars using reusable technology. This can't be compared to flying rockets because the Falcon rocket family dominates the rocket reusability niche. However, in history, there have been rockets designed for potential reuse, namely NASA's Space Shuttle. They aim for reusability by returning to orbit and landing, as well as recovering solid rocket boosters. Unfortunately, maintenance and damage were much higher than expected on each flight, taking months to refurbish each aircraft, leading to much higher costs per flight and less frequent schedules than the program used to justify. Better insulation needs in external storage bins make the entire aircraft heavier during takeoff, limiting payload capacity. In addition, a rocket in the same family as the Space Shuttle used once led to massive costs per launch, NASA's Space Launch System, SLS. Each SLS launch costs from two to four billion dollars, a figure that makes taxpayers dizzy. Therefore, SpaceX's unique reuse strategy has challenged these traditional standards, proving to be a model change, especially in transitioning to a private model in the aerospace industry. The impact of SpaceX's reuse strategy goes beyond the company's own activities. When other organizations, both private and government, witness the effectiveness of this method, it becomes an inspiring beacon of hope. China mimicking SpaceX's strategy may even be called copying, emphasizing the global impact of this pioneering phenomenon. In SpaceX's story, rocket launch prices decrease, becoming a competitive advantage, along with the outstanding reputation that SpaceX has painstakingly built. In the ever-evolving space race, SpaceX's dominance is maintained through innovation, cost efficiency, and a vision for reaching for the stars. But truth be told, while the story sounds grand and impressive, it's also required a considerable amount of time and effort from SpaceX. Elon Musk himself acknowledged the formidable nature of this endeavor, stating, This was actually very difficult to recover the fairing. Unlike the booster, which completes its role in the first few minutes of launch, reaching an altitude of 80 kilometers, the fairing has a longer journey, remaining operational until at least the payload deployment stage facilitating safe passage through the atmosphere, followed by the complex process of navigation, capture, recovery, and reuse, all present major challenges. The question arises, how did SpaceX engineers find solutions to overcome these hurdles? In 2018, to attempt the fairing capture, SpaceX used two ships, Miss Tree and Miss Chief. It was fitted with custom nets and advanced computer-controlled systems and sent out into the ocean to attempt to catch the fairings from SpaceX launches as they fell back to Earth. The problem is they were only successful less than 20% of the time. In the 37 missions on which one or both ships attempted to recover the fairings, they only managed a total of nine catches. That's already a pretty bad average, but when you realize each mission actually has two fairings that need to be caught, that's abysmal. A low success rate is bad enough, but even when the ships actually catch one of the mid-air fairings, things don't always end well. During the October 18, 2020 Starlink mission, the live video feed from Miss Tree briefly showed a fairing ripping through the net and smashing down onto the deck. With each fairing half estimated to weigh approximately 950 kilograms, 2,094 pounds, having one brake loss presents a clear danger to the crew and equipment aboard the recovery vessel, to say nothing of the fairing itself. After all, the goal is to recover them intact so they can be used on another flight. So, the company has started doing the next best thing fishing the fairing out of the water directly. Economically, it must make more sense to simply refurbish the fittings rather than continuing to attempt to catch them. SpaceX has now sold off Miss Tree and Miss Chief and purchased a much larger fairing recovery vessel called the Sheila Bordelon. An integrated crane helps lift the fairings out of the water and lowers them onto the ship deck more easily. As of now, SpaceX remains busy with its duties despite what was previously deemed as unsuitable and long-term. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.